next on American Restoration. How's it feel working with something that was made the same year you were born? I'm tired of the old joke. You know, you're just a mouthy little punk. You want to tell us? You do that one. I want to do this one faster than you. I came down to get both my old scooter and my mom's scooter restored. Tyler is already assembling his scooter. This thing's going to go right down to the wire. How the hell could I be missing a spoke? I'm missing a spoke. You have any idea where it is? No. You are the worst liar. If you look at your face, it's cheating. Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. Ooh. This pile here needs to go to Alfonso's room, yep. so get it all dispersed, okay? Mm -hmm. Customers, let's go see what they got. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm John. John? I'm Rick. Hi, Rick. Rick. Nice to meet you. This was my mother's scooter. This is bad. 1920s. And this one is from the 1950s. This was my scooter that I used to ride. Cool. The family heirlooms. And it'll be nice to have them on display in the house. What's the story? I'm dying to know with these things. Okay. Back in the early 50s, my parents had this in the garage. This was my mom's scooter. Right. I would take it out. Problem was, my friends would say, come on, where did you get this? They laughed at me all the time. <laughs> Finally, at Christmas time, there was this scooter. And uh, I got on it immediately and went down the driveway and was up and down the street several times before I came back to the house. It's cool. The very, very beginning of scooters in the early 1900s, boys would take these roller skates, steel ones, and they'd screw them to the bottom of a board, and then off you go. Scooters have basically been the same for a hundred years. The basic design hasn't changed a bit. So how do you want to do them? Well, let's do them totally original, and it'll be a, a really nice tribute to my mom. Okay. This one here, the spokes are probably going to be the hardest because they break. And if I break these, I'm messed up. Finding some rubber like this would be real hard, too. I'll do the new one. All right, your turn. So we're going to have to take the whole thing apart. We're doing the handlebars coming off. Sam blast it. Take all this paint off. Trace all this artwork so we can keep the original artwork. I mean, it's really quite simple. <laughs> <laughs> as far as price, what are we looking at, do you think? This one here, I'm looking at, um, at $1,500. And then to do the work on that one, that's going to be a little less. So that, that one's going to be $500. So a total of $2,000. I was expecting it maybe to be a little less, but to have it on display in the house, it's certainly worth it. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so Thanks. much. Okay. okay. Let's go in the office and Tyler get those put in line. All right, Ty? Do you take them in? Yeah, you're too old to carry them anyways. My oh, ash. Yeah. After what Rick has said in terms of what he's going to do for both of the scooters, I can't wait to come back and see them in their original condition. Oh, that's shady acres. All right. Can you help? No. I can do it. Unlike you, can't even carry them. You know what? I'm tired of the old jokes, okay? I'm not old. You know what? Won't get old, the old jokes. You're not going to get that any older. That was funny. You know, you're just a mouthy little punk. Oh, I can do both these scooters before you even think about doing them. Is that a challenge? You want a challenge? You do that one. That's good and easy for you. And this one is a monster. And I'm going to do this one faster than you. All the way through, start to finish. But you got to make sure that it's totally correct at the end. Okay. And no corners are cut. Is that if I win, you can stop calling me old. I thought he needed help. Well, steady, mouse off. And uh, now he's got a challenge on his hand, a challenge against me. Good luck. Huh? Yeah. You on? Yeah. My dad bet me that I couldn't get the 50 scooter restored faster than he could get the 20 scooter restored. But the 20 scooter is harder, so I pretty much already have a head start. How's it feel working with something that was made the same year you were born? Smart ass. I'm done over here. Thank you. You're done? I got my whole thing torn apart before my dad even got, like, the first wheel off. I'm taking my stuff to sandblasting, which means I'm ahead of you in the line. Thank you. Have a nice day. He's going to take that to get sandblasted, and he's not going to have Ted copy the art. He's going to forget. <laughs> I need that one. Okay. And that one. What's this? It's like undercover, man. Hey, Good to see you again, buddy. Howdy. How you been? Norm collects candy vending machines, and we've done a few jobs for him in the past. Oh, man. There, there, there. <laughs> Repeat customers are extremely important to my business. It's more or less proof that they're happy with the job. And maybe they'll spread the word, and I'll get some more work. I want you to see something here that I found. Sure. This thing is rough, but I know that you could turn this into, into something. <laughs> yeah, I know that some of the parts are missing, so it's going to be a hard vending machine to work on. It's very cool. Where'd you find this one? I found this one in the internet. Oh, yeah? This thing here was in a lot of places. They're in, like, stores, um, train stations. It's probably 40s. And the coolest thing about the machine is you, uh, you could have 170 different brands in it. Right. You know, like, turn and turn and turn until you right. see what you want. This had actually a mechanism inside right. that's capable of holding just a ton of candy. It rotates in a big conveyor belt. Wow. 
Yeah, what you did was you put the money in here, mm -hmm. and then you twisted it to your selection, pressed the handle down, and then this door opened and allowed the candy to come back out. But there's no press down handle? I'm gonna have to think about how to make that. Uh, and then, um, you know, the, there's a couple of big parts missing. The inside rack is, is fairly large, and it's fairly heavy. Well, could you find me one? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna find one all by itself, or find one in, in a machine. machine. I'll have to go yeah, and research for Yeah, get some. Um, also, these came two different ways, wall-mounted, and they also had bases. Could you fabricate a base for me? I think we're gonna be fabricating or finding a lot of parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've worked on these machines before, but all I've got to work with right now is basically a shell. Finding this mechanism is going to be tough, but sometimes that's part of the job. Okay, we'll get the rest of it taken apart, which isn't going to take very long. <laughs> oh, and then we'll get it blasted. Well, that's going on. I need you to go try to find a mech. I think the main cost that you're going to have is going to be in the, in the mechanism itself and fabricating the bottom pieces. All that together for me to make it like that and working and everything, um, I'm looking at 4,800 to do the whole piece. Wow. Yeah. It is a nice machine. It is very, very collectible. So you're not getting too hurt if you didn't pay too much for it. No, I didn't. I only paid $100. Oh, well, that's not, that's not bad. Uh, I'm okay with that. Okay? Yep. You are right? All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. 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 Thank you. This is going to look killer. We'll go in the office, and then you're going to need to try to find support. All right. Crap. My dad and I are having a head-to-head -head challenge. He hasn't even started sandblasting the rims or fixing the spokes yet. So at this point, I'm seriously kicking his butt right now. This candy machine was basically missing everything when it rolled in here. So if we can't find it, we're going to have to fabricate it. That's too sharp. Thanks for drawing board. Why did you bring all those tools? Because we're doing a teardown. Yeah, but when the guy brought it in, it was pretty much already torn down. I told you. There is no tools necessary. Down. We got in this old Uselite vending machine, and this thing's missing a ton of parts. It's basically a shell, so we've got to fill in all the empty spaces. While Ron's out scavenging for parts, Bradley and I are going to tear the rest of this machine apart, which I think is going to take a whole five seconds. Is that it, or what? Yeah, nothing else comes off. Dude, that's got to be the quickest teardown I think we've ever done. a pair of vintage scooters, and my dad and I are having a head-to-head -head challenge to see who can restore theirs first without cutting any corners. Technically, I was supposed to be doing this on my own, but the 50 scooter I'm working on is made of pressed metal, and it needs quite a bit of body. So I used my phone a friend, and Phil's helped me straighten out the frame. That looks good, huh? Yeah. Meanwhile, my dad is sanding down the wood and filling in the cracks on his 1920 scooter. He hasn't even started sandblasting the rims or fixing the spokes yet, so at this point, I'm seriously kicking his butt right now. We need to make a base for the u select candy machine so that it can stand on its own. So Dave's fabricating one from steel that'll match the same style and shape of the main unit. How we doing? Good, good. That's looking good. Not bad. That's perfect. All right. Now, the next thing, on the candy machine, it drops the candy into, like, this little box, little chute. And then you grab it, and it's right there. You can also see through it. Okay. You see that thing there? The hole right there? Yeah. This is that hole right here. Okay. You'll have the little piece of stainless here, and then this has to be dipped in. Right. Okay, so that you your hand. That is going to be hard. This candy machine was basically missing everything when it rolled in here. So if we can't find it, we're going to have to fabricate it. I need you to just go ahead and make it, and, and, and then we're going to have to try it. We're just going to try it as we go. Yeah. The customer wants this to look all original. So that means even the smallest details, like the edges on this drop tray, have to be just like they were back in the day. No exceptions. Hey, Ted. What's up? Hey, Tyler. How are you? Good. I need you to help me with this scooter. What are we doing? I need you to paint it for me. Paint it for me? Why don't you paint it? If there's one thing I've learned being a shop foreman, it's why do the work yourself when you can have somebody else do it. So if I can avoid doing the work and be my dad, it's a win-win. Okay, what do we got? It's a 1950s scooter. I'm gonna need this red, this red, and these two little pieces, the brick and the kickstand red. No work, work, no anything like that on there? Yeah, there was like a little, I don't know, white logo thing on there. Where is it? What happened to it? Well, it's gone now. We done, did all the body work. Well, you didn't give me a chance to look at it or take pictures of it or trace it or anything. How do you expect me to make a new one? Dude, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to recreate that. <sighs> I can't believe, I totally forgot about the artwork. If Ted can't find this online, my dad's gonna kill me. I mean, all I can do is try. It's yeah. gonna take. It's gonna take a while. So if you're in a hurry, you're gonna have to. I can wait if you can. If you can do this and not tell my dad, I forgot. <laughs> okay. You right. owe me. I know. You owe me big time for that. All right, Ted.
Tyler didn't give me a chance to trace the artwork off of the 1950 scooter before he sandblasted it. So I had to do this the hard way. I had to find the correct artwork from the period before I could create these stencils, and that ate up a lot of time. One, two, three, four, five, top thing. Miller's lucky he's not doing this one. He's confused the out of him. He's confusing me right now. Respoking rims is always tricky. Do I got it upside down? Whether it's either a motorcycle or a scooter, the spokes weave together in a specific pattern to hold up the rim. I took photos so I could see how all the spokes lined up. But even then, it's still a lot of frustrating trial and error to get these back to their original position. Where's the bag? How the hell could I be missing a spoke? Just when I thought nothing could get any worse than this, I misplaced one of the spokes. Where's the bag? I gotta go find that spoke. Tyler, what are you doing sitting on my desk? Working. I'm missing a spoke on my 1920s scooter. Okay. Do you have any idea where it is? I, I mean it. I know they were all there. Do you have any idea where that went? You positive? No. Tyler, you are the worst liar. You look at your face. See, why would you slow me down like that? Well, I had to level the playing field somehow, and I kept it in my pocket. I didn't lose it. Give me that. You should start working on your scooter because you're a little behind. Tyler, I won't get even, but you know what? It's ridiculous that you even try because there's no way you're going to beat me. I'm still going to beat you. I'll stop working on it for a whole day, and I'll still beat you. I'm still going to win, Ty. Unbelievable. <laughs> We've had a heck of a time getting this new selected candy machine back into its original working order. Ron scoured the entire state of Nevada for the mechanism that fits inside. And Kyle and Fonzie got the mech working exactly like it's supposed to. Now it's just a matter of getting all these pieces back together again, and we should be good to go when the customer gets here. How you been? How you been, buddy? Right. Good to see you. I'm here for that candy machine. Here to see the candy machine. Let's go inside. Right. Get out of this weather. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I came back to Rick's to pick up my 1940s you select candy machine. Okay, it's in here. Hold on, wait right there. <laughs> okay, wait right here. I'm excited. Right. Yeah, okay. I know for sure you're gonna love this. Listen, you're gonna this is gonna hit your sweet tooth. I tell you right now, you're gonna love this. It, it sparkles, it shines, it's like it just says, come eat me. <laughs> okay, you ready? All right. All right, okay, I want you to wait right here. I'm excited to see the machine. It was missing a lot of parts, and I just hope he could pull it off. Here we go. Man, it is tall. It's a tower. Yeah. All right, you ready? Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Wow. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> what do you think of that color? Oh, I love it. It jumps right out at you. This is gorgeous. When I first saw my machine today, I was thoroughly impressed with how it looked. I mean, it was just perfect. All right, so Rick. How did you do this? Well, if you remember, I mean, it just had some stuff missing. But it's just sort of a shell. What we did is we found a Mac, and Ron is infamous for finding stuff. The other parts I could not find. Um, this piece here, we couldn't find. This piece here, we couldn't find. This is all handmade. Dave actually took a piece of flat steel and made this into this. And there's these corners, been all welded together, it's stainless steel. Gorgeous. We also made this base. We actually rolled the metal. Awesome job. Now, this handle, was this always here? <laughs> you know, basically, Norm, you gave me a shell. So I had, all this, I had all these little parts to find and make. This piece here, we handmade, and this piece here, well, uh, was on the mechanism. Right. This is the turning mechanism. What happens? See how it turns? Uh, it's basically a conveyor belt. I love the color. Do you? It looks like a 57 Chevy. <laughs> there you go. That's the color. <laughs> Do you have a diamond? Try it. I want, I want to test this out. Yeah, I got that. Here's right. that. Okay, here we go. Select the candy. Okay. I'm going to pick this one right here. That's good stuff. My employees are going to be very excited to see this. This is going to be a great conversation piece. Thank you, Rick. Cool. You bet. Okay. Thank you. So you ready? I'm ready. All right. I got you going. All right. Let's go. Let's go, Ty. There you go. Oh, my God. You actually had the guys work on it, not uh, yeah. you. That's not the point. I won. No, you didn't win. I obviously got mine done first. The 1920 scooter is almost ready to go. I did all the work, and all I got left to do is assemble. Hey, Rick, how's your scooter coming? I'm jamming right along, bud. So I take it you don't need no help? No, I'm good, man. I'm almost done. Cool. Well, Thank you. you. I'll be out back if you need me. Okay, buddy. 
Tyler is already assembling his 1950 scooter, and it looks like this thing's gonna go right down to the wire, and we're just gonna have to see who finishes first. Hey, Tyler. What? You need some help? Of course I need some help. I just got started. Oh, I should doubt if you want to help. I guess you don't need no help. He thinks he's that good. He doesn't need any help. I do. Get there. That's it. I think you're ready to roll, buddy. All right, Kick Tyler's ass every time. I'm totally being my dad. Hi, Rick. Hey, it's John. <laughs> I've come to Rick's Restorations today to pick up my two scooters, the one I used to ride in the 1950s and my mom's scooter from the 1920s. So you ready? I'm ready. All right, I got you going. All right, let's go. It's over here. I think most of us want to remember things from our childhood that are very important and, and bring back such fond memories. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they both came out. Okay, I want you to stand right there by that door. All right. right. Okay. okay. I'm ready. Tyler, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's go, Ty. Right here. There you go. Oh, my God. Look at those scooters. Oh, look at this thing. Is that bad? Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. When I first laid eyes on those scooters, I was just so excited to see them look as original as they could be with all the fine detail on both. They just look fantastic. You know, when you think about it, Rick, this must have been an awesome toy for a child back in the 1920s. Quite honestly, back in the 20s, there was only little toy trucks that you played with. This was a toy of all toys for a kid. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather ride one of the old ones than I would be riding one of the new ones. Yeah, yeah try to definitely. hop on that, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> the detail you've just done a wonderful job just gorgeous yeah hey tyler you noticing that he's uh, looking at mine before he's looking at it get to the point all right <laughs> all right well, we have this little inside thing going on oh, between him a little competition a little competition okay. yeah i restored this one and this is what we did i took it apart i sandblasted everything did all the body work got it all primed out and then i painted it this burgundy and then did the pinstripe the wheels are even pinstripe yeah, have you seen yeah. this wow that is yeah. so cool yeah. well, on this piece of wood it's the original piece of wood on there i just sanded it out and then i stained it absolutely gorgeous Mine wasn't nearly as complicated as his. I had the solid wheels. The only pieces that came off were the kickstand, the wheels, and then the front, and the handlebars. So, Ted had to paint the whole thing red. I mean, this looks just like it was originally. He stenciled on this artwork, he shot the white, and you're not gonna have to worry about it fading or anything like that, because it's all covered in one clear coat. Really nice. And both of you just done a wonderful job. Thank you again, Rick. Tyler, thank you so much. It's just incredible. Hey. Hey, babe. What's up? Am I interrupting? No, 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 it's okay. Hey. We're just getting wrapped up okay. here. Can you uh, take John up front and, uh, and do the paperwork sure. that you do? Absolutely. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Okay. Thanks, babe. So what are you going to give me? I won. No, you didn't win. What, you what do you mean about? you win? How the heck did you get the artwork mean? on the front of that? Because you blasted it before Ted even got to trace it. What's your point? That you actually had the guys work on it, not uh, yeah, you. That's not the point. I mean, you even sabotaged me by stealing a spoke. That's bull crap. It's a competitive advantage. I won. No, you didn't win. I obviously got mine done first. But why are you getting so technical about it? You did a good job. I mean, for doing all that yourself. I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, well, yours isn't that bad either. Looks good. Good job. Get to work. Up next on American Restoration. There it is, right there. Oh, look at that. This is heavy duty. Yeah, nobody could break into them. They dropped a nuclear bomb on one of these, and it was still there. Wow. <laughs> so what is that? That's an old Zelda Shriner parade car. <laughs> what is this? We don't need stuff that looks cool. We need stuff that makes us money. This thing looks cool. What is that? <laughs> this is an egg handler from 1950s. Wow. When they manufacture stuff like this, they put them together to work. That's it. They're not meant to be taken apart. Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. Hey. Michelle's here. You talked to her on the phone about the Hi. cannonball safe. Hi, Dane. Dane, good to meet you. Michelle. Michelle. A little while ago, Ron brought in a 1920s cannonball safe that he got from a pick. This is a gnarly safe and really heavy. And now I was able to find a potential customer that was looking for a safe. So I'm going to see if she might be interested in this one as well as a custom restoration. You excited? Yes. Okay, come on. We're here today because I talked to Rick in regards to a safe. There it is, right oh, there. Oh, look at that. I was looking for one that had unique characteristics and couldn't be moved easily. Why are you guys thinking about a safe? Well, we actually had a break into our house. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And the one thing that had sentimental value was his coin collection. Wow. No, that meant a lot to you, didn't it? Yeah. His father's great-grandmother gave 
certain coins to him, and he's passed them on to him. So now those are gone. And I can totally relate. I mean, I, nobody stole mine, but when I was a kid, I was collecting pennies. And under my closet, I had a secret compartment, and I put my coin collection down in there. I guarantee right now, to this day, it's still in there. <laughs> so now you want to lock your stuff down to where nobody can take it. The guy that takes the safe out of your house, he's going to have to be a big boy. This is heavy duty. Yeah, this is a heavy duty safe. It's made by Mosler. And their big claim to fame was that nobody could break into it. Out here at the test site in Nevada, they dropped a nuclear bomb on one of these and it was still there. <laughs> so you can feel safe now when you get your coin collection going again, you can put it inside there. Does it work? This one's open. Okay. It's all concrete and steel. There's a solid piece of steel in here. This is a time lock. You can set those to different times and that's the only time you can open it. You crank it here, okay, boom, it locked the door. What kind of price are we looking at here? Totally complete, ready to go to your place. It's gonna be um, 6,500. 6,500? Yeah. You think your money's gonna be safe in here now in your coin collection? Well, once you told me about the atomic bomb, that convinces me. You got yourself a deal. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dane. Your money's safe, okay? All right, well, let's go in the office. We'll take care of this. I'm looking forward to coming back and getting a safe, seeing it restored so that we can get it home and we can put his new coin collection in. It's heavy. I'm still trying to figure out how we're gonna get it home. <laughs> There's a guy here in town that I've heard about. Apparently, he's got some wild stuff. I've been trying to see this guy for a while, and we finally got the green light, so Tyler and I are headed over there. Oh, my God. Who has the best time on our hands? <laughs> this guy, obviously. I love going picking with Ron, and I have no idea how he finds these crazy places. Hey, how are you? Hey, guys, how you doing? Good. I'm Marty. Marty. Uh, I'm Ron. I've been here for 20 years. I've been collecting things for over 20 years and bringing things home. Good Lord. Tyler, what? There's a lot of stuff here. What is that? This is an old coffee grinder. You would have this in the general store, whatever you wanted to grind up, you just pour in here, and then uh, spin this. Comes out the bottom, all ground for you. And oh, yeah. You is it supposed to make that noise? Uh, no. Yeah, it's an awesome piece. It's very, very ornate. Got all the stars through here. Actually, I like it. This guy has a lot of junk, but I can see right away there's some gems here, too. We have done a ton of coffee grinders in the past, but nothing this big. This thing could be worth some big bucks. You think this is something my dad would be into? <laughs> Your dad drinks gallons of coffee. Is it something you'd be into restoring? Yes, I think I've already got some guys looking for these. So everything out here is for sale? Pretty much everything is for sale. This? For this, I would like to get 275 All right. Um, well, we're not here just to buy one thing. We'd like yeah. to get a couple of things. I'd love to show you more. All right. OK. okay. So you got that in your database? Yeah. OK. Let's show us more stuff. And have him take off all the electric motors and want him to test all those and get to make sure they work. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. I'm Lois. Lois, good to meet you. I'm coming to Rick's restoration today with an egg candler to see if he can restore it. I grew up on an egg farm and it's been in our family for about 50 years now. This thing looks cool. What is that? <laughs> this is an egg candler from 1950s. Wow. There's also a scale to weigh the eggs and know whether they're small, medium, or large. And these are just a sanding block cleaning the eggs if there's any dirt, dirt or on, on the eggs. That's very cool. My dad would clean the egg, he would candle each one of them, he'd put them into the egg cartons, and then sell the eggs. So candling basically is to see if there's something in the egg, right? I mean, the blood yes, or something like that. Yes, if there's any blood spots in the and egg. And if the blood spots there meant that they were fertile? Yes, so we don't want to eat those. This egg candler is a really awesome piece of Americana. This goes back to the days when everything in farming was done by hand, and there weren't any high-tech machines like there are today. There so should be a bulb in there. There is a bulb in there, but how the heck do you get it in there? I don't know. When they manufacture stuff like this, they put them together to where they're, they're together. That's it. They're not they're meant to be built. taken apart. They're not meant to be taken apart. Yes. That's about the biggest challenge I see. But it's very cool. I've never seen one. I'm not a farmer. I'm a, I'm a surfer. So. so how much do you think it'll cost? With all the electrical, reproducing these decals with the paint, I'm looking at probably uh, 500. It will be nice to bring back the, the memories, so. I'll go ahead and do it and get okay. restored. All right, awesome, awesome. All right, well, I appreciate you okay. bringing it. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's uh, go in the office and take okay. care of some paperwork. I'll be very excited to see the St. Candler when it's done and be able to get to use it again and show everyone. Hey, what is that? Can I drive that? That is drivable, oh, yes. Yes, I want to drive it. You better be careful, dude. I don't think we got clown car insurance. Hey, Brian. The Cannonball Safe is a big project. We can handle the exterior work in-house, but I called in Brian, our lock specialist, to help us out. This thing's a beast, man. That's an understatement. Yeah. I'm very, very excited to do it. It's something that we don't see very often. 
One thing we don't want to do is take that door off. This door probably weighs 500 pounds. As small as they are, they're extremely heavy. This thing is probably close to 5,000 pounds. They're almost impossible to get into if they're locked up. Fortunately, this one's open. We need to come up with a combination for the thing. So the first thing I got to do is get to the lock itself. OK, let's see if we can get this thing open. All right. Hey, you, you got it. Yeah. You just picked it with that little thing? All you're doing is just moving this little lever here. This is the easy part. Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, isn't that nice? This is a time lock. When the clocks are wound, even with the combination, you can't unlock it until these clocks run down. You want it locked up for 24 hours, you set all three clocks at the same thing. You move them over here to 24, there's a little index up here. And then when you close the door, this trigger locks that bolt, so that bolt won't come back in. Let's see if the clocks actually work. Yep, that one's already turning. Wow. Soon enough, all three clocks work. I think the whole clock mechanism should come out like this. Oh, yeah. All your wheels are moving, your springs look all good. Let's set this out of the way so nothing happens to it. Don't drop it. Got it? All right, we need to take this thing out. OK. OK, let's take this off. Our lock should be right here. OK. No lock. The combination mechanism wasn't where we thought it was in the back. So now we're going to try to access the front to see if it's there. If it's not in there, I'm hoping Brian has something up his sleeve, because I have no clue where it is. There. Yay! We got it. Wow. Under here, you're going to see the wheels? Right. I can probably tell you what the combination was. There's your wheels. Oh, yep. You're numbered from zero up to 99. Right. When you dial the combination, yeah. all, these, all these notches here line up with this piece. Right. And when you turn the dial, this should fall in. Yeah. And, that, allow it to and open. that pulls the bolt back. Right. Right here, that little mark right there, yeah. lining up with a number. Right. This number here is 50. That's your first number. It's 50. 15. And this one is 50. They set one number on everything. They did it 50, all 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. So basically, you can sit on 50, 50, and 50. So you got one number. When you're done with this thing, we'll set a different combination in it. But this ring is loose. We have to tighten all that up. Tighten that up. This is bent. So we'll, we'll straighten this out. So I'll take a step back with me. I'll get to work on them. I'll clean them up as best I can. We'll get them all working. But this lock is going to take some work. Right. Hey, what is that? Can I drive that? That is oh, yes. Ron and I are checking out a local collector stash. So far, we found a cool coffee grinder that we may be able to restore for a profit, and the search continues. Yes, I want to drive it. That's old Zelza Shriner parade car. <laughs> it's from the early 70s. It has the original Briggs and Stratton engine on it. It's got forward and reverse. To have a reverse in these is really unique. I'll bet you came from here. I bet you I could. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you too tight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little tight in the pants. That goes on you. Word. The best thing about this is turning radiuses. They're pretty awesome, because they, they do this. <laughs> Parades. So they turn, they zip around. These are pretty flipping cool. Now, sellability, whether we can restore it and. We don't need to sell it. Sell. I'm keeping it from sale. <laughs> With the horn. I'm totally digging this parade car. I don't know if there's any kind of market for this thing, but I can definitely see Bradley and I cruising around the shop in this thing. So, what do you have on this? I would need to get $400 on this. <laughs> I would probably be more in the 175 range, um, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I would have to do a little better than that. All right, so we're going to look around some more. Got more to show us? Yeah, obviously. Lots more to show you. Right on. I'm keeping the hat. All right, yeah. you are not keeping that hat. Back here, guys, I got something that I know you're going to love. It's a tool sharpening instrument. Uh -huh. You sit on it and pedal it, and the stone turns around, and you sharpen your tools. 1800s, probably? Uh, early 1800s, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see you like that. Pedal, man, pedal! <laughs> Didn't work for There's a crack in the stone. How much? Uh, $250. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't really know what yeah. it's worth. Um, maybe we can put a package thing together. Yeah, that's some other sure. Stuff. That's you, Mr. Where are we going? <laughs> Look at you. Uh, package deals are always a win-win. We can get more stuff for a better price, and the seller can get rid of more junk and make more money. It's just about finding that sweet spot that we can both be happy with. So you ready to make some deals? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's talk. We like the uh, coffee grinder. We love the car. Uh, and the, uh, the tool shop there. Sure. Your price is $8.5. We would love to get all of them for $5. Five is a little low. Uh, $6.25. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, $6.25. $6.25. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Marty. Brian and Tyler tried to get me down a little bit lower than I wanted to go, but I think we're both walking away happy. I have some money in my pocket. They have some great homes to restore. We're restoring an egg candler for a customer. Brettley's gonna bead blast all the rust and old paint off. Robert is rebuilding the base out of wood, and Dave is rewelding the broken pieces on the scale back together. 
You guys are back? Oh, yeah. All right. Do you have anything good? Let me see. Craig. This thing is really cool. It's a star milk. It's a good brand. Very popular. Do you like it? Yeah, I, I, it's awesome. It's a great find. What else you got? It's a little car. What is this? Is this a... It's a Shriner's car. Is it really a Shriner's yeah. car? Yeah, it's what it looks mean. like it. Wow, it's got a little... Briggs and Stratton got a, motor in it. A Briggs and Stratton motor. What this thing is is actually a replica of a Model T, and they would run them in parades and stuff like that. They're very cool. <laughs> Tell me about this thing. Oh, what's the toe? You should be wearing your shoes. Keen cutter. Man, this thing is rickety. I mean, this thing's like wasted. This has got a huge crack in it. Is that bad? Bad. It won't ever work. This is sandstone. I mean, sure, we can restore the outside and everything, but we cannot restore the rock. Who's going to buy it with a big crack with some kind of, you know, epoxy in it, you know? Quite honestly, this thing is yard art. I mean, those two, I think you did great on. I think we probably get buyers for that. This thing here, it's cool, but we don't need stuff that looks cool. We need stuff that makes us money, that we know that we can make a profit off. And otherwise, I mean, you guys did really good. We're in the final stages of the egg candler project. The body was originally a dark green color, which I want to keep, but we're going to paint the bottom of it a bright yellow so this thing really pops. As soon as the paint dries, Ted's going to put on all the new graphics that he recreated, and Kyle is going to start reassembling this thing. This thing is going to look awesome, and I really hope it brings back very fond memories of her and her family's farm. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you again. What's going on? I'm excited to see about my egg candler. Would you turn to it? I want you to stand over here. All right. I'll move the forklift. OK. Oh, wow. What do you think? That doesn't even look like the egg hammer I brought in. I didn't expect it to look that shiny and that uh, spectacular as it did. It just looks wonderful with the two colors. Rick, it really looks amazing. What is it that you did to it? We did a little everything, you know. We took this piece out, pounded all the dents out, sanded it all off, and put a really good paint job in it. Wow. This thing all came apart. Our artist, Ted, went and did all this decal. He matched the wow. exact same one that you had. Rick, everything just looks amazing. But my question is, is does it really work? Because, you know, I'm wanting to use it. That's right. <laughs> well, I guess we can give her a shot. I can show you and see if it works. All right. I never stuck anything on there yet. <laughs> Why don't you come with me? OK. Come on over here. OK, let's get this ready. <laughs> Okay. I want, to shit this I want this totally dark. Right. Here we go. Don't let me trip on you. Three, two, one. Yes, it works. <laughs> Very cool. That's a good egg. That's a good egg. <laughs> After we got in there and Rick turned on the egg candler, I was really excited to see that it does work because I am planning to use it. Rick, everything looks wonderful. You love it? I love it. I'm really happy with it. Perfect. Let's go in and uh, we'll take care of the rest of the paperwork. Okay. We gotta see if we can get this down. That's yeah, that's good. Awesome. That thing is just an absolute. That's a work of art. We've been working on a cannibal safe for a while now. This thing is beautiful. And we just got this super complicated lock all figured out. I can't wait to see the customer's reaction on this thing. Hey! Hey! Dane, how you been? Good. Good, Michelle. We came down to Rick's Restorations today to pick up our cannonball safe that we purchased, that we had him restored. So you guys excited? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. I can't wait for you to see it. All okay. right. Come on, it's over here. Let's go see it, kiddo. When we first saw it, it was really dinged up, banged up. So I'm excited to see how it came out. You remember how ugly it was? Yeah. Remember how it used to look? It had a lot of dings and nicks. You know, it sort of, you know, it wasn't attractive. I can't wait to show you this. It's super cool looking. Let's see it. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that, kiddo. Look at that. It's cool. When Rick pulled off the cover, that color just popped so well. It was just like, wow. So, Rick, how did you get it to look so good? Um, well, we ended up hand sanding the whole thing to give it that really, really smooth finish. I mean, it's it's like glass. Yes. Can we open it? Well, you know the combination yet? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we can open it. I'll open it for you. Are we gonna click? Or Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's neat. Is that cool? Yeah. It's good in there, huh? Oh, it's working. Wow. <laughs> See the little timers in there, all the three clocks? You wind the clocks. And what you do is you can set them for different times of the day, whenever you want to get into it. But that's the only time you can get into it. Wow. We purchased the safe because we had a break-in in our house, and one of the things that got stolen was Dane's coin collection. And so we wanted something that could keep all our valuables in. Check it out. I've been keeping one of my prized possessions in here till you got here. 
This is my book, my collection of pennies when I was your age. Wow. Oh, well, look at that. So it took me years to get these pennies. Is that cool? That's yeah. cool. You see these three pennies there? Yeah. yeah, those are steel pennies. You know why they're steel? World War II, they needed all the copper to go overseas and build bombs and build all kinds of stuff. So they made them all out of steel. And this, in America, you could only get a steel penny that year. It was the only year. So it's really, really collectible. So here, this is what I want to do, is I want to give you one of mine to get you started in your collection. I want you to start again. I don't want you to give it up, OK? Oh, thanks. You all right with that? All right, but it'll be safe now, right? Yeah. Got a good place to put it? I think it was pretty cool that Rick gave one of his pennies to Dane so that Dane could actually start his own collection again. And we feel confident that pretty much everything's going to be safe in there. Thank you, buddy. Let's go to the office. We'll take care of the rest of the paperwork, and then we'll figure out how we're going to load that thing. <laughs> all right, Ron. If we can't find a buyer for this thing, I want to ride it. That's all I want to do since it's on. <laughs> I'm good with that. Ready? Yeah. Oh, crap. All Just right. push me. Let's go. Here we go live. Come in, Fierce. You are the crappiest driver thing I've ever seen. Robin's racing. If you'd have hopped, the thing would have moved. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Up next on American Restoration. I came down here today with my 1939 outboard Evinwood motor. So you're going to restore it for your dad? Unfortunately, my dad passed away last month. Hopefully, the people that knew my dad will be able to see this motor back in working condition. Here we go. Prove to me how obedient she is. It gets dangerous around here. And the last thing that I want to happen is for her to get hurt. Come on. Come on, man. We got work to do. I came down to purchase a coffee grinder. We're looking at 6,500. I was looking at maybe half that. The thing is, is there's two. I was a little bit taken aback. Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. Hey, um, can I call you back? I got a customer just drove up. Hey, I'm JC. JC, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. This outboard motor has been in our family for around 60 years. It's called an Elto Pal. Elto stood for Evinrude Light Twin Outboard. These were just put on those small fishing boats, and the owner of the company, Evinrude, for 20 years, he produced outboard motors. Right. In 1917, the first slogan was throw away your oars. <laughs> now we got motors. Yeah. Anyone who grew up near water remembers fishing as a kid, which makes vintage motors like this collectible. Where'd you get it? My grandfather had a little repair shop, and he fixed a uh, washing machine for a neighbor, uh -huh. and the neighbor couldn't afford to pay him, so he offered this motor as payment. <laughs> so he, this hung on his wall for uh, quite a few years, and just recently I told my dad I want to get it restored. So you're going to restore it for your dad? Well, actually, I was going to. Uh, unfortunately, my dad passed away last month. Uh, I really want to do this, and uh, I want to see it come back to life. I want to see it running. This is an option that you could purchase, that you could store the motor in, and I think there was a place for a tackle box. I thought that that would be a cool way of displaying it. I'm going to have to check into that. I may be able to find one. If not, then I'll make one. That'd be great. All right, so how are you seeing this restored? It sounds like it's sort of a showpiece. I'd like to mount it and put it up for years to come, but I would like to see it run at least one time. Right. This looks like it's been chipped. It has. That's the piece that's broke off. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the rudder. It takes the water by it and then turns it. So that's a big deal. We're going to have to, you know, find another piece of material like this. And then when we polish, we'll polish that off. So you won't even been tell. Okay, Rick, I know it needs a lot of tender love and care. What are you thinking about the cost to restore it? Well, um, there's a lot of hand polishing on this. Um, a lot. And, you know, getting the dent out and, and painting the tank. And we're running right between 15 and 1800 to do yeah. the whole thing. This thing is part of my family history, so you can't put a price on that. I think we have a deal. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. Let's go in the office and uh, take care of some paperwork. We'll All right. Started. I'm really excited about seeing it when it's restored. Hopefully, the people that knew my grandfather and my dad will be able to see this motor back in working condition. Here you go. Nice. Kick it down. No. Hey, Riley. What's up? You know, I've been noticing Nana around the shop a lot lately. And uh, you, you remember what I said, you know, that my rule, you know, about yeah. the trainer. Did you train her? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I didn't go and take her to the trainer. I mean, I've been doing it myself. I mean, every day she's been with me. And we run all over town, you know. She's right there in the passenger seat. Riley's had Nana for a while now. And part of the deal was that if she's going to be here at the shop, that he needs to properly train her. I mean, it gets dangerous around here. And the last thing that I want to happen is for her to get hurt. All right, Riley, what I really need you to do is prove to me how obedient and well-trained she is, okay? Rick's worried that Nana's going to get hurt around the shop. And I'm starting to get a little nervous because Nana gets stubborn sometimes. So hopefully this works out. All right, see you in a bit. All right. Come on, Nana, we got work to do.
Hey, Rick. Hi. How are you? Roger. Roger, good to meet you. A little while ago, Ron and Tyler found an antique coffee grinder on a pick. I think I found a buyer, so he's come by to check it out. It is right here. Oh, Wait, wow. wow. Man, that is a lot bigger than I imagined. I work with a coffee company, and we wanted something that would go in a reception area. What do you think? It's huge, right? Yeah, it is big. It's a Star Mill, which is like 1800s brand. But it would be used in stores. You would come in, and you'd get your coffee, and you'd, you'd grind it. Or they would grind it for you. That's about where this one would have been of this size. Yeah, you look like you do something with coffee anyways, right? You sell well, coffee? Yeah, I do the uh, communications and marketing for American Star Coffee Company, and it's, uh, it's going to be the centerpiece of the company in our headquarters. Are you looking to use this, or is it just display? It's both. If we can make it work, that'd be fantastic. And I like the fact that it's got a star on it, because our company's oh, American, American Star. Star. I like that. There's a customer for everything. Part of my job is finding the right buyers for our projects. I hope Roger agrees with my quote because I think this is exactly what he's looking for. Do you want this restored, right? I do. Do you think you can get it working? It does have some issues. I mean, I'm seeing cracks. You know, it's cast iron. And cast yeah. is hard to weld. You got to heat it up at the same time you're TIG welding it. Inside this, we'll blast it and clean it out. It's important to leave it that real raw steel inside there. So when it comes through, does its grinding and what drops in the bottom, it's got nice, clean coffee. My biggest challenge for sure is going to be getting something that originally went right right here. This was the unit that actually held all the coffee. Is the burgundy the color of the company? You got burgundy in your yeah, colors? Burgundy and gold. Okay. So what I'd like to do to this thing, I'll take a look at your logo and we'll try to match some of that, give this a little character of that. So when you walk in, it looks like this thing was for American Star Coffee. It's going to be wow. Fantastic. What would it cost to have something like this redone? Probably 6500 for the whole piece. The thing is, is there's two I things. I was looking at maybe half that. My estimates are based on man hours and the cost of supplies. People don't realize that this stuff takes a lot of time and that costs money. It looks simple like it is right now. Uh, there's a lot more to it and I know there's not that much work into it. I know there is. 6,500, yeah. Let's do it. Fantastic. You bet. Thank Thanks. You. Come on in here. When Rick told me that it was going to be 6,500, I was a little bit shocked. But to see a piece in this condition and the size of it, I was overwhelmed. Let's get this thing done before lunch. Starving. I usually like to get started on items as soon as we get them. But this one's been sitting around since Ron and Tyler picked it because we didn't have a customer. But now that it does, I have Brettley and Kyle tearing it down. Ugh. Nope. No way. This wheel is a real pain in the Normally we do one of three things to something that's this rusty. Hammer it, heat it up, or hit it with penetrating oil. Yeah, right. He's lifting me off the ground. It's the hardest I've seen anything stuck on there, I think. I'm just going to make sure she doesn't get into any unsafe areas. Yeah. Stuff like that. Nana! Nana! I'm going to need that. It's important to test seams like this before using them to store fuel. We're going to put a Coke in the gas tank. How you doing? I came here today to see I picked up a coffee grinder that would actually grind coffee. Okay, you ready? Needs a little lube. We got two major projects moving down the line. An Everton motor that we're restoring in memory of a customer's father, and this coffee grinder that a customer came in and bought from us. Kyle and Bradley weren't able to remove the hub from one of the wheels, so John's removing it with press. While Dave and John get everything just right, it's Tyler's responsibility as foreman to make sure we have all the parts for this project. We're doing an 1890s coffee grinder, and we're looking for where we put the beans in, and then they flow into the grinder. You're not gonna have anything like that? All right, thanks anyways. But the coffee grinder is missing the part that holds the beans before they're ground. So I'm calling around to see if I can find one locally while the guys work on the rest of it. Oh, so you might have one. I mean, because I've been trying all sorts of places and they were saying they didn't have any, couldn't find any. Awesome. I'll be right there. Thanks a lot. Yep. Bye bye. Run! This Evan Rude motor has years of caked on crud, so Cowboy's gonna give it a chemical bath to prep it for a rebuild. Meanwhile, I got Dave splitting apart the gas tank. The inside of this tank is rusted, so Phil's gonna start by blasting it, and then he can pound out the dents. This is the place. All right, you feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky that we got a parking spot. 
Rick has had Tyler and I searching all over the place for this coffee urn. Tyler got this lead down at VCA, so we're gonna see if it's down there. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Tyler. Nice to see you, Tyler. I'm Ron. Hi, Ron. How are you? Good. How are you doing? See you. So what can I help you with today? We have an 1800s coffee grinder that we're restoring, and everything was there, and it was complete except the urn or the hopper. Sometimes we have some parts like that, so we can walk back and take a look. Cool. Good. Awesome. This coffee urn is extremely rare. Tyler thinks he finally found it. Hopefully, this is a quick in and out, get it and go. Is this warehouse is it as big as the auction floor itself? No, it isn't, but it's piled from floor to ceiling. Oh, here it is. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. When we first got here and I saw all the stuff this guy had, I had faith we were going to find what we needed. Oh, oh D. What? Listen, I know we're here for this coffee grinder thing, but come on. This thing's ridiculous. What it's a new laser that? strip game. It's like cards. Like it is. It's strip poker. This right here is where you see your hand. Of course, they made the big screen for where the ladies are. And as you win, what? off come the clothes. Dude, this has endless possibilities. Oh, my God. See, good shape, too. Focus. Remember why we're here. We're here for this coffee grinder thing. A strip poker machine? Oh, that's going home with me someday, without a doubt. It's starting to seem like that's not going to be in here. Keep going. Don't get discouraged, all right? You just, you just never knew. Hey, dude, you see that thing at the very top? Yeah. Is this that what we're looking for? I don't know. I'll there and find out. You're my spotter, right? Uh, it's a lamp. Oh, dude. What? Right there. Did you find right it? Right there. What? Marilyn Monroe. Dude, that is not neon. what we need. Marilyn Monroe neon. Get down here. We didn't find it. Just let's go. Finding this coffee grinder piece has been a lot harder than any of us imagined. So hopefully my dad has a plan B. Is there a way we can fabricate one? I don't know. Hey, Dave. The oven root gas tank is welded and primed. But before we give it a custom paint job, I want to make sure that it doesn't leak. This looks pretty good. You, you you pop this and welded it all back together? Yes, sir. Did you guys test it, though? I shoved some air into it. Okay. But I didn't feel like it was losing any pressure. I'm worried that it's going to haul fuel. You know, you're going to get a nice paint job on it. And then if fuel comes out, it's just going to rip it up. Even though the tank looks completely sealed to the naked eye, moisture can still get through the cracks. So it's important to test seams like this before using them to store fuel. Hey, I'm going to need that. You know what I want to do? We're going to go ahead and pour that in there. You're going to put a Coke in the gas tank? Yeah, I'm thinking that it'll, you know, we'll do a little bubbling out here. At the same time, we'll see it, and it won't ruin the inside. You know, it's not water, so it won't rust anything out in there, and then we won't have any impurities in there. They'll pour right out. Sometimes we'll find unconventional uses for everyday products. The color of the Coke will show through any holes or cracks in the welded seams, no matter how small they are. Oh, yeah. We're over half. I don't say anything. Me neither. I think we're good. That's great. Come on. All the way down. Okay, I'm here for the audition. I want to see how trained she is. Earlier, I told Bradley that by the end of the day, he had to prove to me that Nana was properly trained. And now is the moment of truth. I just got to make sure she's well enough behaved to where she doesn't get into any unsafe areas, yeah. stuff like that. And if you tell her to sit down, she sits down. If Nana doesn't pass the test, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to put her in a kennel or anything. I mean, she can kick it. She sits. So, yeah, I mean, wow. just, just snapping. I mean, wow. And pop. Yeah. You know, when wow. She, when she meets people, I'm you know, impressed. She's got manners. <laughs> you know? She knows words, too. Yeah? Yeah. Like, go get the bird. Go get that. See? She just She's looking for a bird? Yeah. <laughs> can she fetch? I mean, you got the ball. What do yeah. you do with that? Give it a shot. You got to tell her to kick it down. Kick it down. Good girl. All right. She loves the shade, too. <laughs> She knows her place. She knows how to kick it, just yeah. like you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, she's a good dog. All right, Bradley. I think you passed the test, so she can stick around the shop. She's part of the family now. Does she get paid, too? No. No? No. Oh. Uh... Dog food. The test went good. I could see Rick was enjoying it. After this, Nana has Rick wrapped around her little paws, for sure. Tyler just came to me. He wants some help building a new urn for the coffee grinder. Him and Rock can't find one, so it's time for us to make one. Sweet. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Roger's here for the coffee grinder. Hey. Hey, Roger. Roger. How you doing? Yeah. Good to see you again. Good to see you. What's over here? Okay. I came here today to pick up a coffee grinder that my company purchased, and I'm very excited to see the final product. Well, there it is. Wow. <laughs> we chose a coffee grinder because our company is in the coffee business, and we wanted a piece that would stand out in our corporate offices and our lobby. This was a big project. I mean, I had everyone on my team involved in this thing. Yeah, I'm really excited for you to see it. I mean, we put a lot of work in it, a lot of research, and a lot of time. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, wow. That is incredible. When I saw this grinder, I was blown away. I think Rick and his team did a fantastic job, and I just couldn't be more happy with the piece. How the heck, Rick, did you give this thing to look so good? What we did is we sandblasted and everything, 
and then we put a coat of primer on it, and then we put three coats of this burgundy on there. Ted went through and pinstriped all the lettering on it, this Philadelphia on here, he pinstriped each one of the stars. And where did you find this uh, urn? Yeah, the Tyler and Ron went looking everywhere for an urn, couldn't find it, so what they had to do is they came up with an idea where they were going to go ahead and make one, so as much as I don't want to fabricate, just sometimes that's just the way it is. Rick, it's a beautiful piece, and uh, I love everything about it. Now, the one thing, does it work? Will it actually grind coffee? Because I brought some of my own coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? I can't wait to see this thing work. Right? All right, here we go. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can smell it. And it doesn't be an absolutely beautiful restoration. It grinds coffee. You want me to go brew stuff? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we take people on a tour of our uh, company. We'll be able to grind some coffee, make them a pot, and show them what uh, American Star's all about. Cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. Awesome. That's good coffee. Mm. That's good coffee. Woo. I'm glad to do it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That's awesome. This motor right now, we got one step left, and that's to fire it up. Man, this does not look good. I came to Rich today to pick up my Evinrude outboard motor. Here we go. Oh, my God. I'm very excited to see if Rick was able to get it running. There we go. How's it going, Fonz? It's ready to start it on. It is? Yeah. Oh, man. This motor right now gets ready to mount on the wall. We got one step left, and that's to fire it up. Your rep's on the line. I want to pull this, okay? I want to see if this works. Okay. The customer wants it to work, and he wants it pretty on the wall. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Here we go. If it doesn't fire up, we're going to have to tear it apart, get it all greasy, and start the whole process all over again. And that's going to hurt my pocket. All right. Here we go. Man, this does not look good. Hold on, he's my car. Babe? Woo! JC's here for the motor. Give me a second, okay? Okay. I came to Rick's today to pick up my 1939 Evinrude outboard motor. Hey. When I brought this motor in, it wasn't running, so I'm very excited to see if Rick was able to get it running after all these years. I think you're going to love this thing. I, I really like the way it came out. I'm very excited. It's just been sitting up for so many years. I want to see what it looks like. You, you want to see it the way it's supposed to look. It's brand new. Okay. Come on. Right. It's over here. It was dirty and greasy and rusty, and uh, it needed a lot of tender love and care. This is a big one here now. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. All right. One, two, three. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> the motor is in there, right? We're almost there. There's the pine box. I love it so far. All right. You know, I think this is the way your grandfather would have restored it as he was a repairman, too. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Oh, my God. Hey, what do you think? Oh, that is awesome. When Rick opened up that case and I saw that motor for the first time, it was unbelievable. It exceeded my expectations of what it would look like. Are you sure that's the same motor? Yeah, that's the same motor. Unbelievable. Well, this thing has been in the family ever since I can remember and always would sit on the wall and it, it never did run and I always wanted it. My grandfather was never going to fix it. it it's, a, it's a trophy. It's, it's, a, it's a, just an awesome unbelievable. trophy. It's beautiful. But before we put this thing up, I would love to see this thing run. Is that possible? Yeah. We're going to fire this thing right now. Afonso! Yeah! Bring the water! When Fonzie and I tested this earlier, it wasn't working. We've made a few minor adjustments to it, so I really hope that does the trick. If it doesn't turn over, I'm really going to look like an idiot. All right. Here you go. Okay. A little hard. Real hard. Red? Yep. When we got that motor started, it was unbelievable. I was just so excited to finally see it running in that condition. I don't know what to say. My dad could be proud. Thank you, Frank. You betcha. Yeah. Anytime. The paint, the chrome, the case, everything is just absolutely beautiful. Now that it's fully restored, it's never leaving my family. like Nana just found her new best friend. Right, doggy. Right, doggy. Right, doggy. Right, doggy. <laughs> Holy That's Big Mike. Somebody's in a hurry. Big Mike is one of my favorite customers. Ice cream! You never know what he's going to bring in. This is cool. 
Whoop, nice and easy. It's always been my dream to create my very own Main Street, and now's my chance. Whatever you do, do not let this thing drop. Man, this thing is bad. I came to bring in my Xeno gum machine. I need somebody to oversee the gum machine. I was wondering if you want to take that on. Yeah? I'm a little scared to give Bradley all this responsibility, but I know he can do it. It does not sound good. No, it does not. All we're going to do is destroy this thing even more. Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. Oh. Big Mike. Somebody's in a hurry. What's up, Rick? <laughs> Good to see ya. How you been, buddy? Good. How you been? What's going on? Yeah, with New York City taxi meter here for you. Cool. I came down to Rick's today because I got this taxi meter of an old taxi cab. Just a little piece of automobilia history, you know? So I thought, I'll bring it down to Rick, see if he can't restore it. This is cool. Where'd you find that? In a junkyard. And the best part about it, why I got in it, it, it's still going. It's still working. It's still working, Rick. Oh, yeah. That's very cool. So things basically like a clock. Ten cents a minute, it'll go. It's got some writing on the bottom there. It says it came out of it. Wow. What year is it? It's about 1950. 50s? That's very cool. Yellow Cab Company, New York City. This taxi meter is really neat. I mean, it just goes to show how they actually charged fares back in the day. To where nowadays, things are all digital and electronic. It's not the same. So, you know, the funniest, craziest thing alive is that the first speeding ticket was ever given to anybody in 1899, and that was the guy in the taxi. Oh, no way. <laughs> I want to know why you're picking up. I just thought it was cool. It's an iconic, you know, piece of automobilia. Yeah, it's you know, a huge piece of history. history. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like to be yellow, the original yellow it was. Okay. Maybe that taxi yellow, that iconic yellow yes, color. Yes, yes, absolutely. Maybe a wood base. Just give it some height, give it some look. Yeah. You walk up, you go, whoa. Yeah, a little eye candy. I'm just going to put it in my garage in my man cave. Right. Just have some guys come over, and I really want to drink a beer. I can run the meter on <laughs> What do you think it's going to cost? Okay, to pull it apart, uh, blast it all, fill the holes, um, then go ahead and get it all painted, then uh, redo your face with a little brighter gold. Yeah. Um, with all that, I'm looking at uh, 1300 1300 There's a lot of work in there, Mike. I mean, I got a lot of custom stuff done up. We're talking about sort of a, something you're going to mount on your mantle for everybody yeah. to see. I want to do it nice for you. And I know you do nice work. Yeah. Hello. Well, you know what? The meter's running. The meter's running, but <laughs> let's do this. You're on the clock. Wow. Look at all the springs in this thing, dude. All right. Hey, Ted, you got a minute? What you doing? Sure. Yeah, the boss, anything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've been here at the shop for a while, and we got the inside all dialed in and stuff, but I'm driving up every day, and I'm looking at this place. It looks like a big concrete block. We've been here at the new shop for a while now, and one of the things that I really wanted to do was come up with a cool design for the front of the building. I mean, something to make it look like home. You know, I've always had this dream about restoring a whole boardwalk of a 1940s, you know, like a, a street. Good old-fashioned Main Street USA from the early 40s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, why don't we, I mean, it's such a big, long building, and I wanted your ideas about what we could do to the front. You got a bank, you got a drugstore, you got a bakery. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, the building's perfect for it. It's huge, flat, giant, open canvas. Right. So we could maybe paint on the building or do something like that? You could paint it. Yeah. Um, it's going to look kind of flat, and if it's not done really, really well, it's going to look a little hokey. Yeah. But we could build something. We could actually fabricate sections to put on the front of the building, and you could have some real stone, some real brick textures, glass windows maybe. Yeah. This is why I love working with the best of the best. Ted's the type of artist that can envision this completely finished before it's even drawn up on paper. So what do you think? Big project, little project, time. <laughs> the building's big. This project yeah. potentially could be huge, but this big blank canvas that we got really can present some really cool opportunities for us to do something really nice. Okay. I'll, I'll get you something as quick as I can. We'll do okay. take it from there. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Let me know. Yeah, as soon as you can. Wow, look at this damn wheel. Excuse me, guys. How you doing? I want to get an estimate on this machine. Okay, you don't want us to estimate it. We'll get Rick for you. All right, I appreciate it. We'll Thank you, guys. Kyle and I do a lot around here, but we leave it to Rick to say how much it's going to cost. 
Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, Stan. Stan, good to meet you. Nice right. to meet you, Rick. Man, this thing is bad. I came today to Rick's Restoration to bring in my Xeno gun machine to have restored. What year do you think this is? 1893. That's incredible. These are in places like bars and barbershops. Gum in the beginning, it wasn't for your breath. You know, it was good for your jaw. Little did they know, later on in life, they put so much sugar in it, now it's bad for your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it works? Or it doesn't work? No, or it does not work. This is a pretty sentimental value to me because my uncle restored the back of this, and it was working, but over the years, it is broken again in the back of the mechanism itself. My uncle worked on it. Unfortunately, he's no longer living. It means a lot to me. He's one of my favorite uncles. Do you know where that went? Well, this is the weight. That this was the weight. weight. This was what my uncle put on it. Oh, he made that. He made that. Okay, because I've never seen that piece no. like this. This was not original piece. There's a lot of work in this he, piece. He's a great craftsman. Yeah. When you turn this, it, the spring would tighten up. And then when you put the penny in, it would make this thing spin. And then okay. each time this spins, it spins a gear. See the gear move over there? Which turns that gear, turns that gear, turns that gear, pulls this arm back, pushes the gun for it. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's right. pretty intense. First of all, I'm going to get the mechanism out, and we're going to figure out what broke. But it's got the instructions. In case you know. <laughs> I just was reading that. It says irresponsible persons should not be allowed to touch. i got to weigh out who my irresponsible ones are. i got to figure out who's going to help me work on this. All right. So I'll, I want to know, how do you see it being done? Well, I would like to get it back to its original state. Okay. Uh, working state. You're working state. Okay. Still in the antique form with the patina on it. So we want to leave the patina. Yes. What do you think the price would be for that? Um, the whole thing doing it the way you would like it done? I'm looking at 1500 Well, being that it's it's a very, very sentimental piece for me, it's worth it for me to do yeah. that. Right. Except that price. Okay, awesome. <laughs> pressure is definitely on. It is pressure on. I can feel it. <laughs> Okay, grab this side over there. All right, now Tyler, come forward. I gave Ted some ideas earlier on how I wanted the shop front to look. So far, it looks like he has nailed it. It's just a lot bigger project than I thought it would be. Tilt it! Tilt it forward! Stay there, hold on. Nice and easy now. I don't want this thing falling. My dad is determined to rebuild the front of the shop, so that means I'm gonna have to step it up, and Bradley's gonna have to step it up as well. So, you know how busy we've been lately, right? There's nobody to really watch that Xeno gun machine. So, I was wondering if you want to take that on. Do it? Yeah, yeah. You good with that? I can do that. All right, I got the process sheet. It's right here. Okay. This will tell you who's going to do what. Yep. This is definitely stepping it up from other tedious jobs, so I'm pretty stoked to, you know, show them what I can do. You good? Easy enough. Bam. We'll see you. All right. I'm a little scared to give Bradley all this responsibility, but I know he can do it. Oh, this thing's all kinds of jacked up. Yeah. Let's test it out. Tyler's having me oversee the Xeno gun machine. While I have Cowboy and Robert finishing up on the wood, I'm giving Dave a hand with getting the coin shoot fix. I like the quick little fix someone did here with the yardstick. Just drop straight through there. Mm-hmm. Let's take this wood off. The chute is held together by a brass plate and a yardstick. We have to take it apart so Dave can weld the cracks and the brakes. So we're cracked. Here we're cracked. Here we're cracked. There, there. Split in half here. A lot of welding. <sighs> It's in a lot of pieces, and I don't think we'll be able to replace it. So hopefully Dave can put it back together. Ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. We're going to have a big problem trying to weld this. Like, you know, when you weld something, the metal gets hot and it gets turned into, like, a liquid. This, all it's doing, it's just blowing away. You can see where I put that filler on it, that piece just blew out. Some of this old metal like this, damn near impossible to weld. And I'm going to stop right here, because if I try to keep going, all we're going to do is destroy this thing even more. Being in charge is pretty tough. I gotta step it up and figure out a way to fix this. This sucks. This does suck. Hey, Jesse. While my dad keeps working on the front of the shop, I'm spearheading the taxi meter. Since this is gonna be a display piece, I've headed over to the upholster to get a cover made for the pedestal we created. Hey, Tyler. You bet. Mom. All right. Um, so, we wanna make this look like an old school taxi cab dashboard. Oh, cool. Okay. Do you have some blacks I can pick from without going through that mess? I have a mess that took them out the right. Oh, yeah, I got a, a smaller mess. I pretty much know what I want. Now, I just hope I can find it. Picking out upholstery isn't like pin the tail on the donkey. You really have to know what you want and then feel through all the options. I'm thinking something like this. OK. OK. Got it? Yeah. Think? Yeah. We'll do material on this side, and then we'll do the piping here. OK. And then we're going to do staples under here. All right. I thought it'd be cool to learn another skill in the business. And since upholstery is such a big part of restoring things, I thought it'd be really interesting to learn how to do it. So I'll mark it and you cut it. All right, all right. Cut the straight line. Not really. Jeez. 
Now cut yourself extra large scissors. These scissors are nice. I haven't had these in elementary school. Alright, Dave. Uh-oh. The mech's not welding. No, it's just starting to melt away and fall apart on me. Dave and I are still having trouble with the Xeno gun machine. So I went ahead and called Rick in to take a look. Brittle, brittle, brittle. Then let's try some epoxy. Okay. Some of that, I got some really bad to the bone stuff. Get them laid out flat, get them to dry, and we'll give that a shot. Sounds good. I'm pretty surprised that Brelli's in charge of restoring this machine. In fact, I specifically remember reading on the instructions, irresponsible people should not touch. But I guess we'll see if you can actually pull this job off or not. All right, that one's together. Just like that? Yes, sir. Good to go. None of my fingers. So I'm gonna put the needle on the line. Okay. I'm still over at the upholsters working on a new base for the taxi meter, and now it's my time to start sewing. You can put your foot on the on the pedal. Very slow. And just kind of like barely touch it. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's very fast. I blink and it kind of goes. Whoa! That's perfect. Okay. This is my first time sewing, and I seriously think I'm having too much fun right now. Finesse. <laughs> Kyle. What's up? Let's get this bad boy put together, huh? So I've been working on this gun machine pretty much the whole way down the line. Now it's time to get this thing back in one piece. That is so cool. It's got like all the original everything to it, you know? And it's just gonna go in here. Look at that. Yeah, it's nice. Hey, I'm here to pick up my Xeno machine. This machine really means a lot to me because it was restored once before by my uncle. I'm so anxious to see this, and I hope my money is well spent. I'm hoping you like it. I'm uh, hoping you love it. You don't know how much I'm anticipating this. Hey, Bradley, bring me the Xeno. Is he here already? Yeah, he's here. here. I've been so busy with trying to get the front of the shop redone, I put Tyler in charge of the restorations for a bit. And when I found out that he put Bretley in charge of this gun machine, I nearly fell over. But I gotta admit, this thing turned out way better than I ever thought possible. All right, here it is. You know, you were really involved in this, and I want you to feel that same feeling that I get every single time that I show a customer what the hard work. What did you do on this project? The woodwork and the mechanism and putting it back together, I mean... You did the inside and the outside. Yep. yep. And you know, if it doesn't come out like I like it, it's your fault, right? Mm. Well, see, that's what I do with every day, Bradley. It's okay. Ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Damn. Wow. Is that cool? That is unbelievable. I was not anticipating this. Thank you. What can I say after seeing the machine? Wow. Unbelievable. All right, if you remember, the base was broken off. So we pulled it apart and glued it all together, redid the Xeno, redid all these pieces. Everything on this thing is totally original. I didn't think you were ever going to be able to do this. This is probably my favorite part. You ready to see this? I'm looking forward to this. All right, here we go. Wow. Dang. That looks great in there. It looks so clean. So are you ready to see this thing work? I want to see the gum come out of this machine so bad. Here we go. Let's do it. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh God beautiful mechanism in there that is fantastic and a piece of gum yeah for only a penny that's right Michael would be very happy and proud about this Bradley I'm really proud of you You did a great job in this and I'm really happy that you love it I love and, it though and, and and thank you very much for bringing it into us thank you so much yep. both of you yep great cool. great job my uncle would be ecstatic seeing what they had done to it I'm really pleased and I know upstairs he's very pleased too waiting and waiting for you. I was cleaning up the yard. I'm looking for my taxi meter. How'd this thing come out? Um, it came out pretty cool. It's got, it's got a few of those on there. It's all <laughs> checked up. It's all checked up. Looks cool. Oh, man, I'm juiced up to see this thing. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I hope so. All right, this thing's DOA when I dropped it off. So, I hope Rick worked his magic got this thing resurrected because I'm really amped to see it. You're really excited to see this I'm thing? I'm pumped. Come right, on. Ready? Oh, come on, man. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, oh that thing's bad, Rick. He pulls up that rusty drum and pow! I thought I was going to pull up my sunglasses. That thing was so bright. Hey, what do you think? Taxi cab yellow? Taxi cab yellow? <laughs> it's not any better than that. Glossy, glassy finish. 
I mean, it's unbelievable the job they did on that paint. Oh, this thing's off the hook, Rick. What'd you have to do? Okay, so when you brought it in, if you remember, all this was just faded and broke, so Ted redid all of it. This gold in here, that's a brand new plate, and then we wanted to uh, put it on a dash, okay? So Robert cut a piece of wood, and he gave it that shape, and then Tyler took it over to Jesse, our upholster, yeah. and he made this just like a dash, same sort of Naga High, it's a real deal. Yeah, yeah, and then this flag, it's about out here, so it's really big. So Dave cut this, he bent it, he made it shorter. Can't, can't even tell. Right, so now you can, you can do it and get it set. Ooh, I hear it ticking. Yeah. That is bad. <laughs> now it's hired. Okay, so it's running. What is it? Uh, the fare of 75 cents and 10 cents per minute. You didn't raise it for inflation? No. Okay. Okay, we left it the same. And then this one right here. We got no extras. If you wanted to add an extra, now what's the extra? The extra is a fare, meaning you got, you got another guy in the car. Oh, I got you. So you got one extra. So let's say you had two people, and it's cost you 40 cents extra. Yeah. Right. That's uh, each person. That's what? For the price of gas nowadays, I'll just mount this in my car. <laughs> but my buddies want to go for a ride. I'm all set, man. <laughs> That thing's awesome. It works like it's supposed to. You can't ask for anything more. It's just, I hope Rick stayed on the budget and he didn't keep the meter running too long. So, on the budget here, uh, did you take the long way around the block or on it or what? Well, you know, this face um, was a little more than I thought it would, you know, but um, that was definitely worth it to me to get that done. And uh, the, the whole budget and everything together, we made budget. We did? Yeah, oh, we made budget. Oh, man. Okay. So, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I never expected it to look like that. That thing's awesome. I was really excited that Rick came in on budget on this thing. I know it was a little project, but just the little details and the way Ted did all the painting, I mean, you can't put a price on that. We're getting late. All right. Thanks, Rick. Haters run. Gotta go. <laughs> I think this thing will go perfect in my man cave or my garage. It's amazing. <laughs> See you later. Tyler! Ron! Kelly, everybody, come here! Get everyone out here! I want to show you guys something. With the recent work on the front of the shop, our new location is becoming exactly what I envisioned for Rick's restorations. Now that the work is done, I want to show it off to my team. You remember the front of the facade? We yeah. finally got it done. I want to show it to you. Come on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You guys ready? Yeah! All right, come on out. <laughs> this way. What do you think about that? Oh, wow! Yeah. Outstanding! Oh, is that bad? Check it out. I love it. Looks oh, cool, man. huh? Yeah, awesome. Absolutely awesome. It looked like a big piece of turd, but now it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good deal. Now this is home. We got the Richfield gas station like the old shop, and then we added some new. We got a five and dime. We got a theater. We got a barber shop now. We've got a bank there, a diner, and then down at the end, we got the old restoration shop like we used to have. So both sides, we got the old, and in the middle is the new. You know, guys, this is my dream come true, and I definitely couldn't have done it without you guys. I'll go give it us all raises. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. I'm proud of you guys. We need to get back to work. Come on, let's go. Oh, I'm really proud. No, I'm really proud. Come on, Anna.